Okay, we're gonna be playing Higurashi when they cry, and nothing much to really say other than I might have to change where I am at certain points because I'm in my room and if the heater goes off again, which I can't even control in this stupid apartment, that I, is, I can't even control my own heater for when it turns on and off and the heater is so loud, it will just ruin the video. So if, if the heater starts going on again, I'm gonna have to pause the video and just straight up go to the living room or something instead of my own room. So it's really annoying because I can't just record peacefully in my own room. But anyway, am I recording? Yeah, I am. I like the cricket sounds. So, we'll get started on Higurashi When They Cry. Visual novel. E. Oni, Oni Karushi opening. Welcome to the world of Higurashi when they cry. The Oni, Oni Kakushi, Oni Kakushi arc will be the opening, inviting you into this world. Don't, don't play tough. Please just enjoy life in Hini, Hinamizawa to the fullest. The difficulty is extremely high, but I hope you will enjoy the reward. Wait, is there gameplay in this? I hope not. I hope there isn't gameplay. Okay, lowering the volume on that shit. Huh. Please do not lament. I will forgive you even if the world does, will not forgive you. Please do not lament. I will forgive you even if you will not forgive the world. Oh, I couldn't read the other one. This is a world of fiction. Yeah. Okay. Okay, lowering the volume. Wow, this is loud. I had to close my room door. Okay. And uh, it's going so fast. How am I supposed to read this? Only the cry of cicadas remain annoyingly loud. And yet, I felt as if I could hear her voice. But that's not possible. She is no longer speaking. The only one crying is me. She never cried. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion because there were none to show. If she had no tears to shed for me, then I shouldn't need to shed any for her. Then why this pain? My eyes getting moist. Why was this happening? I still wanted to believe I hadn't been split apart. That's enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered gently. My spirit has suffered enough. And countless times I've wavered over whether I just throw the battered thing away. Except I'm... I've stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? Ah, it's going a little too fast. I'd feel better if I just threw it away. Even knowing that I chose to believe it, and I, only I can understand that painful struggle and appreciate it. I like the cicada noises. Hey, me, I've tried more than enough. I mean, I'll acknowledge that much. So, isn't it hard to just take the easy way out? says I'm not throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind with her. Like flowers by a grave. Now then. 
calm your nerves. There's no gameplay in this, right? Even though you can't feel your right arm, just looked it up. Because they said something about difficulty. And with every swing, forget a little more. That kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. Yeah. I like petting your head. I love how demure you are. Because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is mine. First and last. Bokwe? Bokwiti? What the? How do you say that? Perhaps I really did. L love you. Yeah, I should go back and watch this anime again soon. Maybe, I don't know. Somebody has been apologizing for a while now. I wonder what she's apologizing for. It felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I tried to ignore it. Yeah, it's been a while since I last went to the city. I only returned to attend the funeral of a relative. Even though I lived there until last month, I found the bustle of the city to be overwhelming. But yeah, I really hope the heater in my room doesn't go off again like while I'm recording because then I'll have to change rooms and that will be really annoying those skyscrapers and the multi-lane roads the melodious cacophony what of the crosswalk even the campaign speeches blaring in front of the station felt nostalgia doesn't show me anything also, there's quick save. Okay, quick save right here. Place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There's only the chirping of locusts and the babbling of brooks, and the cry of the higurashi, the evening cicadas. Rather than making me feel lonely, the, that quietness had begun to instill a sense of sincerity. There's nothing where I'm living now. I just don't. They're not showing anything. I get that we're in a train because of the sound, but like, they're not showing anything. I just don't mean there aren't any burger joints, there aren't even vending machines. No music stores, no restaurants, and no arcades. Even an ice cream parlor would be unlikely. The, the nearest town has some stuff like that, but it's an hour away by bike. But come to think of it, it wasn't really a big deal. There were music stores and arcades and ice cream parlors, but it wasn't like I ever hung out at any of them. I had lived in the city for 10 years and never once been to an ice cream parlor. I should have gone at least once. It's only now that I'm starting to regret it a little, oh shit. Somebody is still apologizing. Who is she apologizing to? She's apologized so much, so just forgive her already. There's no reason anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I started to feel a little annoyed at whoever was for refusing to forgive her. No matter the, how bad the mistake, there's nothing that can't be forgiven. There's no such thing as a ir 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 Parable? What? Mistake. You just need to be more careful next time. She's still apologizing even now. Then I should really done something that can't be fixed. I have no idea what she's done, but she, it can't be fixed, and that's all the more reason to forgive her. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change. But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking voice. Hey, you the one she's apologizing to. Why don't we just go ahead and forgive her? She's apologizing in such a pathetic voice. Catch you, we're almost there. Wake up. I was finally roused from my nap by my father's prodding. It seemed the train had reached its final stop. 
You spend hours riding everything from the bullet train to the local routes. It was hard to believe that the landscape beyond the window in the city I was in half a day ago were in the same country. Know that they were even from the same era. From there we take a car deeper into the mountains. Past where the dense forest encroaching on the mountain road suddenly opened up. There where I live now, Hina Mizawa. Hina Mizawa. Hmm. So yeah, it's chapter one and um yeah. Even though we were approaching summer, the morning air still had a frigid bite. Although in exchange, you could fill your lungs up with crisp, clean air. Flipping open the window, I was greeted with a verbent expanse. What does that mean? Oh, I think I know what it means, never mind. Nothing but trees. The neighboring house was far away on the other side. So I was probably the only one enjoying that view and that air. It's so weird reading instead of just watching anime. Cause like in anime they show everything. But in, in reading it's kinda just the words. It's like what? Like in visual novel they show one little image or whatever but like... I don't like this. I don't like having to read this instead of seeing everything. I filled my lungs with another deep breath. Since I started living in Hino Hinamizawa, I learned that even air had its own taste. Air has its own taste, really? I quickly finished reading... Wait, no, what? What? <laughs> what? What? I quickly finished getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. My mother was the only one there, my, my father was nowhere to be seen. He was probably out working until the early morning. My father had a rather unconventional job as a painter. It's such a laid back profession. Get out when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I was so jealous of that easy going lifestyle. I even wrote for school that I wanted to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. It was just because it looked easy. <laughs> I'd never tell him that though. <laughs> That'd be, that would, <laughs> oh, because it looked easy, oh man. Yeah, hell no, don't tell him that. Mom laid breakfast out on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. My mom was such a good cook, it was scary. A perfect, immaculate, ideal breakfast. Yeah, nobody cares about the fucking breakfast you have. Oh my god. <sighs> Unlike my dad, who didn't even know the meaning of the word schedule. My mom never squandered any time or effort. She on the little tuna, she brought over the miso soup. It seemed like she was in a good mood today. I'm so happy you've been waking up early since we moved here, Ketchy. If I don't wake up early, I won't have time to eat breakfast. I thought I was being cute, responding with a wisecrack after being praised for being good. Full bowl of white, oh. That rice or will half be enough. Pile it on. 
First I savor the steaming hot rice with the seaweed. Oh my god, who gives a shit? Who cares? I'm sorry, but like, is this what reading is? Is this what reading a book is like? It's like... It's like all this would be so fast in an anime, but when you're reading, it's, it's just completely taking forever. Between bites of rice, I enjoyed the crunch of the pickles. <sighs> Not bad at all. Excellent as usual. Watching me clean my plate. Pla watching me clean my plate. Mom gave a warm smile. I'm so happy you haven't skipped breakfast ever since we moved here, Ketchy. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right until the last minute before school and rarely ate breakfast. Boycotting the breakfast mom made each morning. Why would you call it eating breakfast boycotting? That's so weird. Like in a, uh, such an unnecessary weird way. Why would you call eating breakfast boycotting the breakfast? What? Is this how writers are like? Authors, writers, whatever you call it. Boycotting the breakfast. What? That was probably the only way I could protest being forced to attend cram school. I guess that was what you call my rebellious phase. I wouldn't so much as look at the breakfast she woke up early every day to make. I could go back in time I'd stop myself. Over breakfast? Over food? What? So, who cares? I'm mindful of the time mom rushed me along with white grin. Isn't it about time to meet with Rana Chan? Hurry, hurry. Mom really seemed to enjoy the fact that her son was going to school with a girl. Rana is one of my classmates. She really, really loves looking after people coming to meet me every day without fail. The way I looked at a guy my age walking to school with a girl it was just lame. Oh well, keeping a classmate waiting for me, waiting for me every day wouldn't be very considerate. Seriously though, how long does Reno wait there for me every morning? Taking one, one last gulp of miso soup, I raised for the door. Please thank Rena Chan for the pickles. Fucking pickles, man. Fucking who cares? Fucking pickles. Ugh. Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store bought, were they? If I'd known that, I'd savor them a bit more. Morning. Ketchy kun. Good morning. Her cheerful, her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. You're always so early. You should try sleeping in sometime. If I sleep in, I'll keep you waiting. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it like that. She's so con conscious, conscious, um, coincidus, conscious. Oh my God, reading is a pain. And such a good person. If that ever happens, I'll just leave you behind. Kichikun, you're so cold. I wait for you all the time. I'll leave you in the dust without looking back. Why are you so mean? Why? Eh. Rena had a slightly troubled look on her face. Toying with her was rather fun because of how quickly her mood changed. I'm kidding, I'd wait for you. With those words, Rena seemed to relax. Yeah. Her face flushed bright red. Ah, thank you. I'd wait forever until you came, Rena. No matter how long. Ah, uh -huh, forever. Rena turned bright red, steam rising from her head as her brain short circuited. She's especially weak to this sort of talk. 
quite rare to find someone this fun to tease. Have you ever read a romance novel, Rena? Huh? I have never read any before. From that response, I gathered she was interested in them, but she was too embarrassed to actually buy one. I can't imagine what would happen if she did read one. She'd probably turn red and pass out. I got a message from mom. Uh, she says thanks for the pickles. Fucking pickles again. Goddamn pickles. It was nothing. You're welcome. How were the... Not too salty. They weren't that salty. Actually, they had a pretty light flavor to them. They're still talking about the pickles. Okay. It would have been fine to just be honest and say they were good, but apparently I couldn't be that forthright. I'd like to ask something before that. Were you the one that pickled them, Rena? Or was it your mom? Huh? Why do you ask? Were, were they too salty? Her, her attitude completely changed as it, she began to panic frantically. Was it you, Rena, or was it your mom? Are you asking who made them? Why? Depending on who made them, my opinion of them might change drastically. Ha. Huh? She counted frantically on her fingers trying to remember the amount of salt she used to pickle them. Fucking pickles. Like, over the pickles. Move on already. Whatever. It wasn't like I was trying to tease her, but I couldn't stop myself. Guys who take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst guys like me. Rana nervously opened and closed her mouth over and over, trying to muster a response. It was me. Delicious. Huh? Pretty good, just like the last ones. They went perfectly with the rice. I like, I like the music though, at least. I like the music. Let's just listen to this. Her face went bright red again. She was completely face spacing out. She was life on teaser. Pretty that Rana never gets taken advantage by some little life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep at it, Rana. I'll train you until you handle it like the average person. Or so I decided about for myself. Let's go. If we keep me on waiting, we'll never hear the end of it. Seeing as she just keeps spacing out, otherwise I called Rana back to reality so we could make our way to school. This strange, easily flustered, fl flustered girl, flustered girl is Rana Ryugu. Yeah, okay. I only known her for about a month, but I've come to realize it's not just her name. That's strange. Me chan, good morning. Coming up to the next rendezvous la rendezvous whatever that freaking means. Point we saw another person waiting for us, noticing us, she waited. Ah finally, finally, you two are late. Usually you're the one that's late. This sharp contrast in, to the diligent arena. This one marched to the beat of her own drum. She's Mion Sonozaki. For what it's worth, she's our senior and head of the class. Morning, Rina. It's been a while, Ketchan. How many years? I was only off two days. Aha. Uh -huh. You don't say. You were so much cuter back then. Mion's gaze started at my chest and dropped. Straight down, focusing on the point between my legs. So she was saying that my crotch, that was cuter back then. Before you ask, just to be clear, I've never actually tried to show it to her. I've grown quite splendidly. You'd be surprised. <coughs> Ugh. Ugh. 
Not only is he bigger, but he has a little mustache now. Being so engorged with energy every morning. It's quite a problem though. I'll introduce you next time, so be sure to greet him properly. Don't say next time, right now, dirt friend. How about letting the little guy get a breath of fresh, air, of fresh morning air? I don't think I ever heard morning talk. What do we what? But what? 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 I can't fucking read. I don't think I've ever heard talk so dirty you could smell it falling up the morning air before. The fuck does that mean? I mean, I'm sure there's act like an old man sometimes. Gotcha. Time for the big reveal. Hope you don't regret it. As my hand reached for my flight, what does that mean? Reach for my fly. What? Rena began to ramble in a near panic. Hey, 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 what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I had a face and fluster. Rena tried to play dumb, but it was obvious she knew exactly what we were talking about. Oh man, visual novel music is always so freaking good. I love the music, but like, anime is just so much better. Anime is just so much better, man. How was it? Seeing the city again. Mion switched gears, dropping the dirty dog and changing the topic to something more befitting of pleasant, uh, befitting the pleasant morning. I only went for a funeral, I didn't have much time. Hello? Dude, it's been 26 minutes and we're like only in the beginning. Like if this was an anime, all this would have this whole part would have been like literal beginning. Literal beginning. But since this is a visual novel, it's been 27 minutes and we're still we're still at like the total beginning. You're not listening at all. I just came back from a funeral. I didn't have any time to look around in toy stores. Toy stores and ho hobby shops shops are completely different, you know. It's really difficult to get Western stuff around here after all. Is this about games again, me turn? Leon <laughs> nodded proudly as Rena giggled. Yeah, but I wanted K Chan to bring me back a Westport catalog, you see. Westport was short for Western Imported Games. Using that abbreviation did make us sound pretty geeky. You can just get them to send one in the mail, can't you? Wait, girls play video games? What? No, they don't. No, they don't. I'm kidding, it's an anime, so it doesn't matter. It's an anime, of course anime girls play video games, just not real life girls. Well, I guess I have to know. I'm going to get another game full of hot action. This time I like a game that's easy to understand. Mion Mion is a board and card game enthusiast. And I hear she's collected quite a lot of different ones. <laughs> yeah, like girls don't do that in real life. But in anime at least they do, so that's that's cool and all. I, I'm just saying, like, reality check, girls aren't like that, they don't play video games, they don't freaking play card games unless unless they're just doing it to be trendy or whatever. According to Rena, Leon's room has kind of become a museum for domestic and foreign games. If there's a game you think I'd understand, let me play too. Yeah, of course. If K-Chan is up for it, 
I should warn you though, we're pretty tough. Just what I want. I play all sorts of games. I don't intend to lose. Well, then we'll let you in the grid this time, I guess. I guess. Wishing with joy from head to toe. I had look back and forth between me and Mion. Mion gave her an affirmative wink and her expression perked up even further. I thought I boys preferred playing outside more, so I figured you wouldn't want to. What? Boys are the gamers. I'm sorry, I, I know I shouldn't try to, like, think of reality too much. It's just, it's kind of hard to sometimes. Like, the reality in this world, to this world, to the anime world, like, is so much more different. Because the bitches don't play video games, they're more outside shopping or whatever. And the fact that I just heard boys prefer playing outside more, like what? We're the ones playing video games all the time. Rena laughed happily. From such a friendly conversation, you wouldn't think I moved here less than a month ago. I understood that they did all they could to make a transfer student like me feel at home. I'll have to try harder to fit in so they won't feel like they have to try to make me feel welcome. I acted like I, oh my god. I felt like if I acted a bit more open than I usually am, maybe it should probably be about right for this place. Hinemuzawa was a really small village. Not only was there only one school, but there was only one class. That class encompasses all different grades and ages. There are about 30 students at different levels and they all study in the same class. I told that long, long ago there used to be a bigger school building and they had actual separate classes. However, I've seen something happen that made it become a single class and now it stayed that way out of tradition. I was shocked at first, but humans adapt pretty quickly. I've already gotten quite used to it. The sound of children playing started right from the morning. It was such a lively mood, it felt more like a kindergarten than a proper school. Not that that was a bad thing. See, I wish I was living in the countryside in a town like this, a village like this. That'd be nice. Mion, who had been walking in front of us up until then, suddenly let me take the lead, right in front of the classroom door. So I was meant to slide up the door open and enter the room first. Who cares? Heh. Too bad I wasn't gonna fall for that again. Fall for what? I don't get it. Enter. Uh, whatever. To think you'd give out the lead here, you meant for this to be a test of my skills. Me and Chuck over the, with a how do you smirk on her face. What is it you guys? Step back Rena is dangerous. She's here. Huh? Then Satoko Chan is Her name was Satoko Hajo. Oh yeah, I, rem I certainly forgot, but like suddenly like remember now. The, the whole story, is the theme, the story is that everything's all great, like a regular slice of life. But then everything goes wrong. Everything gets all fucked up and wrong, so I forgot about that. This isn't just another slice of life, it's a... It's a Things go wrong kind of thing. <clears throat> the way she talks was annoying, but it would give me a trip to get worked over just like that. 
The real problem was this. Quite the obvious trap of black boy to race your wedge in the door. So it's too obvious. It's hard to go. A uh, haughty laugh came from beyond the door. Excellent, Kichan. Kichan. I guess that means you win this round. No, this is Satoko we're talking about. I doubt this is it. I drive behind for such intricate traps. What does that mean? Since the day I transferred, I no longer left, let my guard down. Satoko liked to combine a variety of variety of traps. Traps that were meant there to bait you into the main one. Traps that relentlessly kept coming at you like a sadistic Rube Goldberg machine. The fuck is that? The, the list goes on. As well as being clever, they almost never misfire. When you least expect it, she strikes. No escape, no time to relax. By the looks of it, this eraser is normal. No rocks or anything in it. I took a pretty heavy hit from a blackboard eraser loaded with rocks on my first day. I'm sorry, but if I don't see things, I can't really understand what's going on as much. I mean, I kind of understand, but it's not as cool as an anime is. Because anime shows everything going on. So, I, I don't know. So then, why don't you just open the door and let it drop? Okay, I'm gonna end it here. So, wait, uh, tune in for next episode. Bye. Yeah, bye.